this time, Mr. Senator. Chairman, if I may. Yes. I have a couple of comments and, and some concerns, and uh, I thought it was a very good hearing and, and well conducted, and I think, I, I don't think many people can legitimately say that regardless what their views were, they were treated respectfully and their views welcome, and that's an important part of this process, and your attention to that process is important. My concerns begin with the, the fiscal note. About 75 or 80 days ago, when we were told there was no more money for this budget and don't don't consider large fiscal notes. I believe that this will be the largest fiscal note in a bill not considered by the Finance Committee. And I think that's a source of concern because I, I believe, as we were told 75 days ago, it's going to be a very tight budget. I'm concerned about accountability and, and particularly, Mr. Chairman, because I don't know that anybody has been more involved in the issues and questions of accountability than you have over the last few years. It's been a privilege to, to, to do that with you. And we've spent a lot of time and a lot of years working on accountability systems and seeing to it that our school systems and curriculum are accountable to the people of the state of Texas. And we still have a ways to go. But accountability is important. Our education system costs the people of Texas a lot of money. What concerns me about this bill is there are no accountability standards. What is taught, how it's taught, what its success parameters, there's nothing in the bill. And so those who go and take public money in public schools will have some of the most stringent accountability standards in the country, and those who get public money under Senate Bill 3 will have none. And I, that's a particular concern. Then we have a concern that's related to a hypothetical. If you will allow me, let's picture a situation, and, and, and Texas is a good example. We're a growing state, an increasingly diverse state, and all the things that really make living in Texas a truly rich experience. But imagine one of these days, and, and I'm not saying it will happen, it certainly could. It probably would be in a bigger city. Uh, I, I, I suspect it may be on the coast, but let's say Dallas, San Antonio, or Houston. That an interest decides, in addition to the other private schools that we see, private, parochial, diocesan, that somebody decides to put in and operate a madrasa, an Islamic school. And let's say in this madrasa that they choose to teach a philosophy in addition to the, the core academic subjects, because they can uh, teach religious indoctrination, that they choose to teach a philosophy and a curriculum that is anti-American, anti-Christian, anti-Israel. We must, as Americans, ardently defend their right to do that. What we are not obligated to do is to spend public money for indoctrination and, and curriculum like that <clears throat> And I have a real and abiding concern about that. Thank you, uh, Chairman Sutterger. And I, I have talked about accountability as a member of this committee for several years. Uh, if you will file a bill, I will gladly join author it with you and others who feel that that's the route we need to, to take. Uh, at this point, um, what we are, I think, trying to accomplish, quite frankly, is trying to better the education of our children, allowing parents to be involved in the process, and hopefully thinking out the box, giving uh, options, new options that have never been tried before, who have worked in other states, and hopefully, God willing, it will work for our children. But I certainly agree that accountability, transparency should be part of anything we do in state government. And, and I appreciate that, Senator Lucio, but if we're gonna hold these families accountable under certain accountability measures yeah. and spend public money, how can we take this group of families and not hold them to the same accountability standards? I hear you and I just I just expressed and to you that I'd be happy to join off there and if, any if, bill that calls for accountability. If I measures. were to introduce such a bill, they will be the same accountability standards. I, uh, I visited a, a Montessori school in my district. Excellent school. With, with some of the most dedicated, forward-looking people I've seen, and what they told me is, if we were to get vouchers, will we be subject to the accountability system? 
And I said, I can't imagine you wouldn't. We go right down the street to Midland Independent School District, who spent a fortune on seeing to it they have coordinators and things so that, that kids do well in our accountability system. And her reply to me was, we don't want that. And I said, it's very difficult to justify getting a lot of government money and no government. And, and therein lies it. But I appreciate your, your generous offer, and, and I think it's, it's an important subject to discuss. Yes, sir, and we'll continue to discuss that, I'm sure, as the process continues and goes to the House of Representatives. Senator Taylor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Senator Selder, not to put you on the spot, but if, if, we were to, if we were to change this bill around and have a positive fiscal note and have accountability, would you then support it? We're going to have to address the the indoctrination deal, which I think is up for as which I have just as large a, a reservation. But that would be some progress because I think those are real shortcomings in the bill. So you would then support it? I didn't say that. I understand. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 